What's up creators? In today's video, I will be giving you my thoughts on the Sony A7S III since Sony has now announced the launch event for it, which will be taking place in July 28th. Now, I just recently made a similar video on this topic, but I just had to put out this video since we now sort of have a flavor of what to expect from the Sony A7S III. Now, these are just rumors and we won't know the specs for sure until that event. Now, I will be mentioning my top three features that are to be expected in the Sony a7S III that I find to be great to have and will be a big deciding factor for most people for buying or upgrading to this camera. To begin with, I would like to start off with the Sony a7S III sensor. The a7S III might come with a brand new 12 megapixel full frame sensor that offers more advantage for video shooters than photographers. Having large pixels allows the sensor to capture more light, meaning that it has great low light capabilities with less noise and more dynamic range. With that said, this could be the best low light performing camera Sony has ever made, but without having any evidence-based tests, we don't know for sure. As for the video features on the A7S III, this camera is expected to shoot 4K 10-bit 422 at 120 frames per second with the option to shoot RAW over HDMI. This would be really great because I'd rather have a high quality 4K 120 frames per second than 8K RAW. 4K is just more user friendly and I personally think that 8K is not necessary for this year. Shooting 8K RAW on the Canon R5 will result in huge file size and overheating issues, not to mention the expensive CFast card. What's amazing that on the A7S III, you might have the possibility to upgrade using HDMI cable to reconnect to an external monitor to even shoot 16-bit RAW. I prefer shooting RAW externally rather than internally, so this is a really great feature if this is really true. Now another feature I would like to mention is that rumors suggest that the A7S III has no recording time limit. If this is true, personally for me, this already beats the Canon R5, which has a record limit of 30 minutes. Also the expected built-in cooling system on the A7S III prevents the camera from overheating, which can be very useful in hot weather conditions, unlike the Canon R5 that is expected to overheat after 20 minutes of shooting AK RAW. Another great feature that we might see coming is the 1080p capture in 240 frames per second, which allows for buttery smooth slow motion. Before, if I wanted to capture in 240 frames per second, I had to use my iPhone 11 Pro to do so. For our third top expected feature is the flip out screen. An exciting rumor suggests that the A7S III will come with a new fully articulated screen. Many people have been waiting for this feature to come especially for content creators like me that need to film themselves might not need to use an external monitor in the future. Another exciting rumor news is that you will be able to control the display via touch which will make shooting and reviewing footages even easier. I already like the focus touch feature on the Sony a7 III that allowed me to focus precisely. If this all seems to be true with the expected price tag of $3,000 then the Sony a7S III will become a very popular camera soon. For me as a Sony a7 III user, I will definitely make an upgrade since the a7S III is considered for videographers and will bring lots of value to my video production. I'm really excited to see how well this camera will perform in terms of low light and autofocus. Now all we need is for Sony to confirm these specs on July 28th, which will be very exciting to watch. If you haven't seen my previous video where I talk about whether it's worth leaving Sony and the a7 III for the Canon R5, then click on this video right here to check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I wish you a great day and see you soon. Take care.